Hey guys, Dave and Mike back here with how to find a niche and uh, getting really into the nitty gritty here of some real world examples of niches and how to find them. I think that this is kind of like the the bookend on this module, right? I mean, we're going to actually get into some real world things on items that you can actually pick. We hear a lot of times from students and from being around uh, other entrepreneurs in this, that this is like actually the hardest part. So the idea here is to really get you thinking and showing you how easy it really kind of is to find a good niche. I mean, this is something that we put together in a matter of just a couple of hours. And we're going to go through five like real world niches. A couple of these are things that I've personally considered doing myself. Um, but I have a saying of like, don't drown yourself in opportunity. Another one of if you chase two rabbits, both will get away. We already have four brands, so we don't need to be trying to do a fifth right now. So we're, we're set, and I'm going to disclose a couple of things that I've been looking at. Dave has got things here that he's looked at. Uh, this is just stuff of how to find a niche, right? How to find stuff, how to go through and use all the stuff that we've talked about and apply it in real world. So how do we determine these niches? So as an example here, uh, Dave's going to kind of walk through because he has this fifth level worksheet, and there's a module on that here. But we're picking out one of the things here is people with disabilities. And Dave, can you kind of walk through here how you just thought through that process? Yeah. So one of the first things I do is I just go through this fifth level worksheet. And like I mentioned before, it's just an Excel document of thousands of different categories. I'm using this just really as a brainstorming tool. And so I'm going through this and I'm kind of, you know, quickly in my mind, either crossing things off or letting things perk my interest. And so when we came up with the idea of uh, products for people with disabilities, I was just reading through it. I seen wheelchairs as one of the categories on this fifth level worksheet. And I thought, geez, well, what else could we do with wheelchairs? And I thought about, you know, I have a dad who just suffered a stroke and he's looking for a knee brace. He also has a cane. So you can do that type of thing. Also just assisted living type things. So things uh, like, I forget the exact word for it, but um, the support devices that go around a toilet and the support devices that go around a shower. So that type of thing. And I know just from looking for both my dad and other family members, these things are grossly overpriced. Um, so yeah, I just went through the fifth level worksheet and used it as a way to just brainstorm for ideas. Yep. And even just like you're saying here, like walking down the aisles of a Home Depot can give you a lot of ideas. You just walk up and down. And that's kind of what we also have done at the Canton Fair. You start walking up and down aisles. These are things that will start to trigger ideas and just kind of go down the rabbit hole, if you will, until you hit a dead end. And if you hit a dead end, you come back and, and start over. So uh, before we get into the into the five different niches that we're going to go over here, that's just a couple of things I want to mention. I mean, there, there will be a lot of dead ends here. You can't let yourself get frustrated. This is relatively easy, but there will still be a lot of dead ends. You'll start going through the fifth level worksheet or you'll walk up and down Home Depot's aisles or whatever and never quite find the perfect thing. But some of that can also be in your head. You know, you can analyze something to death to find the quote unquote exact perfect thing. Nothing's ever perfect in life. <laughs> so, you know, you want to look for something that's like 95% good or 90% good and, and kind of run with it, I think, at that point. So let's yeah. kind of dig into it. We're going to go through, through these one by one. We kind of put these in order of the easiest niches to get into versus the ones that get a little bit more difficult because they have a little bit more. Well, you'll see as we kind of go through it, they have some more particulars to them. But the first thing we kind of come up with here is hunting products. I mean, this is a great niche because it's very broad. There's lots of different products in there. Uh, and Dave and I will just kind of bounce back and forth here uh, through these pros and cons and, and talk through why we think this is a great niche. I mean, first of all, people are fanatical, right? I mean, we talked about that throughout this process. You want something that people are really passionate about. I think that that's a, a huge pro. Uh, Dave, let's uh, bounce back and forth. Yep. And uh, the next thing is you can source a lot of products from one supplier. Um, chances are that one factory is probably making, you know, 10, maybe 20 different products. Or you can find a really good trading company specializing in hunting products. And you probably can get 90 percent of your product catalog from one supplier. Yep. The next one here being low in complexity, I can tell you that some of these things on this list over here on the potential products side are things that we've looked at doing ourselves. And there's a, a good chance that we will like a gun bag, for instance. Uh, you know, you're not selling someone a gun, but you're just selling them a bag. Uh, we mm -hmm. went through some of these other examples before how to take a complex product or something that might have regulation around it and make it simpler. Just simply selling someone a gun bag, uh, very simple. All you're doing is, is sewing fabric and throwing a zipper on it. So definitely uh, lots of low complexity items in this niche. 
Yeah. And uh, this is one of those categories, too, where it's almost like a red herring because you might think on the surface, wow, hunting products, you know, there's going to be a lot of regulation around that because obviously guns are not the easiest thing in the world to import or uh, get approval to sell. But there's so many products that go with hunting that don't include the guns that require absolutely no regulation. Like Mike mentioned, uh, a gun bag. There's no regulation around that. You can you can import any gun bag you want in the world into America, and you're not going to really raise any eyebrows. So, again, it's one of those things to look for. Categories which may on the surface look like they're a pretty heavily guarded category, but really once you start digging deeper, uh, there is no regulation, no uh, Amazon gates around the category. Yep. And then, you know, on the con side, there, there definitely are some huge retailers and huge brands that have a lot of traction that, and this is definitely an industry where name matters. So that's definitely on the con side. But it, as we get through these potential products, you'll see that you can kind of overcome that with, with picking the right product. So you, know, you don't have to be a Cabela's or a Bass Pro Shops to compete in, in this niche. And just going through some of the potential products here i mean you have something as simple like a, a hunting blinds uh, we mentioned gun bags that those are incredibly simple to to make a gun rack i mean it just you know just some metal and some screws uh pretty pretty easy stuff uh, dave you want to go through these other guys here hunting decoys and i love hunting decoys i mean i think you can almost do a whole website and company just based on hunting decoys you know things like uh deer and uh various birds uh, you could, I mean, you could probably do a hundred different products just on hunting decoys alone. Again, the same thing goes with uh, dog training items for hunting. I mean, I know a lot of hunters are absolutely crazy about their dogs that they go hunting with, and you know, you need to train, you need to train these dogs. And you know, some you can do this with basically a fake bird that you kind of toss for the dog, and he comes back and he gets. And that's would be an example of a great item. Um, so just even in the training aspect of training a hunting dog, again, you can almost do a whole company just based on that. So you can see in this whole category, there's like, there's tons and tons of products that you can do. And that's one of the beauties of once you actually pick a niche, it really makes finding products fairly easy. Yep. And we actually even pulled up here on Amazon uh, something in the hunting niche. I mean, this is a decoy training dummy of a duck. I mean, let's just go through this thing, Dave. I mean, first thing that sticks right out to me there's one freaking picture here. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. And so, I mean, it, I can't stress how important it is to have all the pictures up there. I mean, at least four or five, six. I mean, I, I direct my people to put every single picture up there. That these yeah. guys are killing themselves. I mean, the, the connection between you and the customer are these photos. You can't go in and touch this thing and pick it up and feel it and look at the other side of it and understand exactly how this thing ties or all these different things, point out the important things to people that are looking for these hunting decoys. Uh, next thing, Dave, bullet points. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you can see here, I mean, there's three bullet points. You're allowed to use five with Amazon, and they've used four, maximum four words in each bullet point. Like, you know, there's, cert there's certain things which are just absolutely critical to this product which are missing. Like, how big is this decoy? Is it the size of my fist, or is it like, is this like the size of right. a turkey? How big is it? Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, how could you buy this thing? It's really hard. It's really hard as a consumer to buy this because they're missing so much information, both in written form and in uh, and in images. And speaking more about written form, the title is another thing that's really lacking. I mean, the the title is the most important thing from like an SEO, search engine optimization, how to rank an Amazon standpoint. And there's all these extra words you could put in here about things like the size or the material, or uh, this isn't a subject I know a lot about, but you would go through and do the research on other things people are searching for when it comes to these to these dummies. And I mean, they're just, they're killing themselves. And the same thing goes down here in the description. I mean, they have barely any description. It's it's pretty, pretty crazy. I, mean, I would say that these guys are successful despite themselves more than anything else. Um, and if you look at their ranking, I mean, we sell a lot of stuff in sports and outdoors. I can tell you that a, a top 10,000 ranking like this, I mean, this is a product that they're selling many units per day. This is a success. Can you pull up this? Design. And can you pull up the stats, Mike, uh, to show how many they're actually selling a month there? An estimated. If I uh, use like, Jungle Scout Pro here, we can find that out just real quick, just as an example. Well, there you go. Well, I'll show it in, uh, I'll show in Jungle Scout here, which is another tool you can use. So they're selling about 10 of these per day. And this is a... Yep. Eleven thousand uh, per month revenue. Uh, actually, just popped up and went away. Uh, these are just it was adding up the different the different ones. So, uh, 
yeah, I mean, it, this is definitely a product that that I would go out and just start selling today. And if I was looking to be in the hunting niche, uh, this is something I would definitely be looking into. There's different colors and variations, which you can do uh, as you get more successful in, in the products doing well. You can pop more of these up. It's something that's getting reviewed well. Uh, so you might not be able to improve the quality of the product, but you can definitely improve the living crap out of the quality of the listing. There's no out. There's no third-party sellers on here. So I mean, this is a a bigger company that's selling these, and and you can certainly do the same. And I have to imagine for what they're selling these things for, that you could buy this thing in China cheap enough to be able to make a profit. Uh, you know, no, no way of knowing that until at this that kind of like was where that rubber hole comes in. I mean, you got to kind of go through and find that out, and maybe you get down to the end of it and find out you can't buy these things for less than thirty dollars in China, and and you spent you kind of wasted some time. But at a high level, I would say that this is a, a very good opportunity. So we're going to spend a little bit less time on each of these next niches because we've kind of gone over them at a high level. But we already talked about the people with disabilities. So uh, Dave, you want to kind of do the same back and forth thing here, and let's hit the pros and cons. Yeah. So just from experience, I know this is a niche where the products tend to be grossly overcharged. I mean, this is one of those niches where it's almost like you're stuck in 1980 where you're paying, you know, a thousand time markup almost. So, you know, a $10 item might be being sold for $100. So I know just from experience that this is a category where people are making absurd profit margins. Yep. And Gosh, there's definitely way more than 25 products in this uh -huh. niche. Wheelchairs, uh, wheelchair bags, uh, rails for your your toilet. Like you said, uh, the the toilets that, that help lift you up uh, if you're if you're disabled. Stuff for the bathtub for anti-slip. There's chairs that like help you propel you get up. There's walkers. I could go on forever mm -hmm. to talk about this. There's plenty of products. Yep, and the same thing again with all those products comes a lot of different content that you can make. Um, Again, just speaking from experience, a father just had a stroke. I'm looking for articles everywhere. You know, how do you help somebody that's just had a stroke? And you could easily create great quality content around each one of these products. You know, how to pick a, a toilet rail, how to pick a wheelchair. And these are all really unsexy things. And that's what makes it a great category because most people are going after the really fancy uh, products that everybody wants to, you know, kind of be around. Things like drones and iPhone cases. But the unsexy categories tend to be the really profitable ones. Yep, and just on the heels of that, but just by the virtue of the fact that it's not "quote unquote" sexy or whatever, it's probably not competitive. You know, people will kind of stray away from this. So there's going to be a lot more runway for you as a third-party seller, private label seller, uh, in this niche because there's just not going to be a lot of competition, which is great. Yep, and again, it's high-value products. Most of the products are fifty dollars plus. A lot of them getting up to $100, $200. So, again, it leaves a lot more meat on the bones that you can use to put towards your Amazon PPC and just to get an overall better hit every time that you sell one of these products. Yep. But on the converse side here on the cons, you definitely need to be aware of certain me medical regulations. This is something I can speak to with a fair amount of intelligence because we're FDA certified. And it's interesting what things trip needing to be FDA certified and not. So if you're just getting started, I would just stay away from that FDA regulation portion of it. Again, talk to your customs broker and ask what products need to be regulated or which products have regulation and which ones don't. For instance, something like a wheelchair may or may not be regulated, but I can promise you that the wheelchair bag is definitely not regulated. Yeah. So you can definitely start with the things that aren't regulated, knowing that you have a big niche to go expand into and get that FDA certification and, and leverage that later on. Yeah. And uh, the other thing is, too, it's a fragmented market. So obviously not everybody with a disability has the same disability. Somebody with a stroke isn't going after the same products as somebody with arthritis. So it's a little bit fragmented there. You can't you can't sell a stroke patient uh, an arthritis uh, aid. Uh, so that's one of the problems. Uh, but overall, I mean, there is a lot of crossover on there. And again, you can use the same supplier for a lot of these products because that supplier is probably doing a lot of these different medical devices. Yep. So just to run through some potential products here, knee braces, I mean, this is actually something that we already do sell just to, for full mm. disclosure under the Ice Wraps brand, does quite well for us. Uh, certainly you can apply that to, you know, we, we really target physical fitness and surgery stuff, but you can target knee braces after disabilities and, and go after a different group. Uh, yep. There's things such as canes. Uh, obviously, that's a pretty simple product, a great product uh, potential there. 
Uh, wheelchairs gets a little bit more complicated. Uh, again, may or may not, I haven't looked into it, may or may not require uh, FDA or some type of a regulation, but certainly uh, wheelchairs is something that I have certainly personally thought about selling. I think that even though they're oversized and they kind of go out against the grain of some of the other things we talked about, they fit all these other things, right? Like we just talked about, they're, they're not incredibly competitive. They're incredibly high priced, high margin. So I think that these first three are, are definitely good ones and, and Dave's gonna share these next ones. Yep, accessible clothing. Again, uh, the people with disabilities a lot of times have problems putting on your usual clothing. So things like uh, pants without buttons, um, you know, a, a belt that's easy to get on with somebody that maybe has paralysis on part of their body. Um, again, I hate the clothing niche overall, but you could probably pick some really good uh, niche items in some niche items within this niche, which wouldn't be quite as horrifying as clothing normally is. And like we mentioned before, toilet rails and shower rails, you know, those rails that go along uh, your bathtub or a toilet to help somebody again with mobility issues get up uh, after they've been to the washroom or after they've taken a shower. And again, these are really simple items that there's not a lot of complexity around and a lot of markup as I think we're gonna show here uh, with our next example. Yep. So here's an exact example of toilet rails. Uh, you know, something that's that's selling for for forty nine ninety nine. Let's just hit the Jungle Scout. We didn't do this previously. I mean, this is all a part of what you would do as a part of your research, just to see uh, the volume here. I mean, this thing's selling four hundred and eighty units per per month. You know, so what does that work out to? About fifteen per day or so. I mean, this yeah. is like this is a great product. I mean, and it's just super simple. Uh, I don't believe that this would have any regulations. I would still check. But there's there's still things that you can improve upon here. Dave, you want to kind of talk about some of that? Yeah. So I think, you know, from a marketing standpoint, they haven't done a terrible job here. Uh, the photos could probably be improved. They don't have any photographs of, like, somebody using the product. And, you know, in marketing, imagery of people really sells. That's why if you go to a blog, a lot of times you see a picture of uh, a beautiful face like Mike on the <laughs> – <laughs> On the splash page, it's because something in our brains, you know, when we see another person, it really triggers uh, some connection there. So, you know, just having a picture of somebody using this in the photo would help enormously. Uh, but again, even going away from just kind of on the surface marketing, you'll notice if you go through the reviews here, a lot of people have kind of critiqued this product because it's unstable. And you can kind of see why it's unstable. It's just two little legs there. Like if you had two more legs supporting this thing, um, as you're using it, it's probably going to become twice as stable. And it, it's just a piece of steel. It's something that any manufacturer in Alibaba would be happy to modify. It's not going to take a lot of upfront costs for them to put an additional leg on this thing. You might even be able to find somebody already making this exact product, but with four legs. Yep. Or even maybe just higher quality steel. There's always things you can do uh, for those things. But yeah, definitely. And, and, and this is something that can probably packed down into a standard size item. I mean, this doesn't come in the box uh, at these full dimensions. Uh, you could definitely work with your manufacturer to talk to them about like how to put this together in a way that gets stays under the Amazon oversized thing. I think you can probably just quite get to that if you design it properly uh, and give you even a bigger leg up to have uh, higher margins to, to keep a standard mm -hmm. item. The other thing that I noticed here is that they don't have the enhanced brand content. I mean, there's still lots of room here to, to do more to, to illustrate how the product works. I think that that's incredibly important with a product like this. Uh, this type of photo here is really important with the dimensions and everything. But as Dave was saying, I mean, there, there could be these lifestyle photos down in the enhanced brand content and above that would just explain the product way better. This is probably something that uh, a, a son or daughter or, or loved one is buying for someone else in, in a lot of cases. and they're, they're going to be very concerned to make sure that they're getting the exact right product that they're, they're getting for someone that might be leaving alone. Uh, you know, and they're going to want to see it kind of in action. I mean, there's nothing here to, that kind of tells you what this looks like in comparison to a, a full-size human being, right? It just sits on the yeah. toilet, but there's nothing here to relate to. So I think that stuff can, can make a huge difference, and, and there's definitely uh, a good example here for that particular niche. So yeah. uh, the next one is pull products. This is something else. While Dave and I were at the Canton Fair, uh, this is something I was looking into uh, pretty deep. I, I, I think that this is a great niche. There's a consumability angle to it. There's just, uh, I own a pole. I can tell you how freaking frustrating it is. Uh, lots of content uh, for maintenance and all these other things. Just, it's, a, it's a great niche. 
Uh, again, it just you know we can only pick so many. I didn't I didn't not pick this one because I thought it was bad. It just uh, Dave eventually had to reel me in and remind me uh, how many things we're already doing. So, um, but just as an example, again, I think that this is a great niche. And just starting off here uh, with these pros, I mean, high ticket items. I mean, I, again, just speaking from experience, uh, someone that spent fifteen hundred dollars on a pull pump and eight hundred dollars on a pull filter uh, in the last uh, eighteen months. These are expensive products, and they are made in China. And you can potentially start your own pool company with, with those types of items or other things that are even simpler to start with, but then work your way into the more complex items. And I think that it's uh, definitely uh, a really good niche. And I've already kind of talked about some of these other pros, so I'll, I'll do that and let you do the cons, Dave. But as you say here, you can trickle down to the audience to pool decor, pool towels, you know, I would maybe look at things like uh, maybe the chemicals, uh, testing kits, covers. There's solar covers for pools. There's just uh, th there's piping. There's the the pool filter baskets. There's just so many accessories that kind of go in the pool niche. And there's a lot of great easy things you can start with that are smaller and lighter and work your way up to the more difficult things. Uh, I think I personally think that that's a great niche. Now, obviously, there, there's some cons, and Dave's going to talk about those. Yeah, the biggest one, the biggest con being that this is a seasonal product. And obviously the pool season uh, isn't year round in a lot of parts of the US and uh, other parts of the world. Uh, but it's not a micro season like something like Halloween products or Christmas products. I mean, the pool season is more or less around six months in most parts of the world. And then even once pool season's over, you do have that end of season market, you know, people putting away the pools for the year, you know, getting them sealed up and uh, ready for the winter. So, you know, it's probably a season that's six, seven, eight months long. And that's not terrible from a seasonal standpoint. Yeah. What you really want to be aware is, you know, when you're getting into a seasonal item, which is only a couple months a year, because then you get stuck with inventory for a lot of dead time. Yeah, couldn't agree more with that. And, and one thing I'll, I'll mention for me, and the reason I was interested in polls, this can be a pro if you're someone mm -hmm. like us that already does a bunch of stuff that has a peak season in the Christmas season. So mm -hmm. coloring books, for instance, are very peak season or, or a big a big gift item, I should say, around Christmas time. So our peak season is Christmas, even though it's the rest of the year is, is pretty good. But having something to kind of counterbalance your, your peak sales and kind of smooth out your year uh, for me actually was appealing. Now, it might not be if you're just getting started, but that that's kind of the position that we were in. So you can look at it from that perspective, too. So uh, back and forth on the uh, on products, pull ladder. Solar cover, the cover that goes over the pool uh, when it's not being used to kind of heat the pool. Uh, pool lights, uh, pretty self-explanatory, just lights that are either in the pool or maybe even landscape lighting around the pool. Yeah, yeah. strainer baskets that go in the pump just to filter out everything kind of that sifts into the pool. And then pet ladders and, and other safety devices for, for kids to get out. I can tell you that our, our doggy loves spinning in the pool, <laughs> um, which also makes me think of another product which was that we bought, uh, was which was a pet hair filter that like was like a sock that goes over the filter that like keeps the hair from even getting into the into the basket and then into the filter uh so going into a example product here in the pole niche here is uh this frog critter saving escape ramp <laughs> so you know if you got you got critters things that are swimming in the pool and you care about wildlife or, or, or I don't know, like, I guess frogs. This is a pretty funny uh, item. I, I can't believe this is like one of these things. I can't believe it exists. But I, I, we do see stuff in our in our pool. There are things I don't particularly care to save, like mice. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, but, but you know, I guess it does happen. I, maybe I'd rather them uh, be able to get away out of the pool than have to freaking clean them out myself uh, when they're when they're dead in the pool. So, but yeah, I mean, this just goes back to the things we've been talking about. I mean photography there is one picture here uh, and it's kind of a gimmick item but still if you have more photos uh, certainly you could you could do a lot better and then kind of let's go through the rest of it Dave yeah um, again the bullet points there's five very very thin bullet points and I mean the thing is here like you look at this and you have really no idea what this does and it's actually not a gimmick item it's a real item you know Frog lands in the pool. He's stuck there swimming <laughs> around all day. <laughs> Tired so frogs. <laughs> so he needs some way to get out. And uh, again, it seems like a gimmick. Once we look at the sales numbers, you're going to see that this is actually a really legitimate product. But if you just explained it a little bit more in detail in the bullet points, like you could probably double your sales just because 
people that have the problem of fr- frogs in their pool, they go, oh, crap, I never even thought about this. Yeah. This would be great to kind of keep my pool clean of those little guys. And I, I see two more like things glaring at me here. The biggest, like if I could put it in 1990 uh, – web format of fluorescent yellow blinking things it would be <laughs> the fact that this thing is not fba this is someone shipping this charging shipping uh in our experience these types of things can double or even triple their sales by just doing simply nothing but that uh so uh, there's a huge opportunity there and then the title again you know they're they're if i was searching for a frog escape or hell or whatever <laughs> you would call this thing uh it probably wouldn't even really show up well uh because the, the title is, is, is pretty darn poor. So, And you know, the incredible thing is they don't even have the word pool in the title. Like that's going to totally hamper your searchability when somebody's searching for anything to do with their pool. Like really put the word pool on that title and sales are going to go up a huge, a huge volume. Yep. Uh, other things which we've been talking about, uh, no enhanced brand content, horrible description, but as Dave said, this is no joke. I mean, this thing is selling. It's a top 1,000 item in toys. I'll hit the Jungle Scout thing and spin the roulette wheel here and see what, yeah. what this thing comes up with. It's going to make me want to go develop a, a escape route. Look at this thing selling 1,200 units of this a month. It's absolutely incredible. It's something like, what, 40 per day. Uh, this is a legitimate item. This is something that you could go develop right now. It makes me want to go develop it right now. <laughs> but uh, yeah. again, we're, we're just trying to stick within our in our lane. There's there's trillions of dollars of products. This keeps on showing you, like, how many opportunities there are out there. It's, it's actually pretty amazing. There's lots of reviews on this product, lots of people buying it. They're, they're, this is a slam dunk type product that uh, you could do within the pool niche for sure. And again, I think it's really important to mention here that you know coming up with the niche was the hard part in kind of going through the lesson for, for us here. Like once we found the niche, like these products are everywhere. But how are you ever going to find a product like this if you don't have the niche narrowed down? Like it's next to impossible. So again, we're it's just kind of reiterating that a point that we're making through this entire lesson is pick your niche first. Don't look for products. Yep, I agree. I definitely agree. All right. So next one here is off the grid green energy. This is another thing that I've looked into uh, in the past. Uh, it's been a while, but uh, it's something I'm personally passionate about. I think that saving energy in, in, in our environment is, is a good thing. Uh, so, and this is a up and coming industry that still is just continues to expand, which I think is is definitely a pro. Um, so, kind of going back and forth here on the pros and cons. I mean, there are lots of potential products. You got solar lights, solar chargers, solar fans, uh, potentially like small wind turbines. There's even things like uh, rain capture buckets and stuff that can kind of go into play in this in this niche. So there's lots and lots of products. And again, it's that high price point. These aren't $5 items. They're all $50 to $100 plus items. Yep. And then these are definitely things that are easy to customize. I mean, as you're doing solar stuff, you can say, I want a, a little bit more powerful cell or larger surface area for more cells, or you can do things like a, a higher wattage battery, uh, the better quality battery, things of that nature. There's definitely lots of things you can do to customize this stuff and make it your own. Yep, and there's a lot of different segments that you can market this to. So obviously there's RVers, there's campers, there's boaters, there's hippies who just don't want to tap into the city power, and there's just people interested in solar products. So again, it's great if you can identify kind of your core niche, but the more and more kind of sub-markets that you can market it to, uh, the better success you're going to have. Yep, and there's definitely tons of content that you can write about this. And the thing I like about this niche is it's not necessarily like super old and super established. So there's still probably lots of content that hasn't been written yet. So you're not trying to even compete against anybody when you're writing content, which is even a better lane to be within. And there's a wide audience of people that are into this stuff. You got people from, that you might be quote unquote crazy, they're off the grid prepper type people to people that are you know, just more everyday people that are in their home and in some place like I am in, in Southern California where power is expensive, right? So I mean, it, it can just be, if, even if you don't want to save the environment, you can go look at it from the angle of how can you save money? And lots of my neighbors have solar and they're telling me about their, their electric bills that are zero and making me jealous. So there's lots of things you can write about in this niche, which is, which is awesome. Um, on the flip side, the cons, it can be seasonal. I mean, someplace like where I live in, in Southern California, uh, our, our pole season and our sun season is, uh, 10 to 12 months, <laughs> we're, we're pretty lucky. I realize uh, as someone who's been all over the country, that isn't normal, but um, 
you know, so depending on, on where you're at, it can definitely be a, a seasonal issue. Yeah, uh, definitely as a Canadian, very seasonal item. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the next thing is there is a high level of expertise required here. Um, for me, when I was looking into the, these products as well, I mean, there's a lot of information that I had to digest to kind of get my kind of get my feet on the ground to understand these products. It's not something like this this frog safety device where I can look at it, understand it immediately. I mean, this is going to take you a little bit of homework to kind of understand what types of products people are looking for and kind of how to have an intelligent conversation with suppliers on Alibaba when you finally do start to look for products. Yep. And on, on another con, I mean, it, it's definitely easy to make small improvements to the products like we were talking about a little bit earlier here on the slide, but it's going to be very difficult, or I would say probably impossible, to make significant improvements. The solar industry, if you're talking about just solar in particular, uh, there's only so much you can do with the current cells that are out there. And, and every 12 to 18 months, like another generation of cells comes along, you're not going to be the one that's going to be developing the new generation of cells. You kind of got to go with what's already out there, uh, unless you've got tens of millions of dollars to throw at the problem and, and make a research team, uh, which is obviously not practical. It's The best you're going to do is is make a little bit of uh, small changes like color or uh, the material around the solar product to make it stronger or better, or, or maybe make the surface area, like I said, on, on the product a little bit higher to, to, to get more solar cells. But that's probably where it ends and, and obviously also packaging you could you can work on that too so um so yeah potential products i mean there's just so much stuff we're going to show you the solar attic fan here in a second i mean this is just a, a slam dunk item again uh but yeah solar attic fans and then dave you want to get back with this back and forth here solar batteries solar lights so there's various solar lights that you can put in all types of situations you can put them in your patio you can use them on an RV, you can use them on a boat. Uh, there's a lot of different scenarios where you can use solar lights. And the same thing goes with, basically you can integrate solar into anything. Uh, you see a lot of times now people have backpacks and when they're hiking around for days on end, you, they can actually charge their phone or other tiny batteries while they're hiking around. Same thing goes for phone chargers. So there's a lot of different- on, uh, I just want to interject yeah. real quick. I mean, I, yep. as you know, I've been getting a lot into backpacking and stuff lately. And this is a product I just bought like last week. I, I can't, it's embarrassing. I spent $120 on this solar cell that, because uh, batteries get sucked up like a GoPro. If you're out there backpacking, and you want to take photos, $120. I mean, I was like ready to go develop my own solar panel. Uh, <laughs> these are like, as we talked about, these are very high price point items with a lot of margin. Uh, and, and this is a great example of something that you could develop uh, right there. Yep. And again, the same thing goes with solar cells. So just the actual cells, which are taking the energy from the sun and charging things. So let's go into the solar powered attic fan. Uh, don't need to kind of dig into the same things over and over again, but in, in five seconds here, no photos or one photo, uh, poor bullet points, not a really built out title, uh, going down to the description again, no enhanced brand content. Uh, very high margin item. I mean, this is a two hundred and fifty dollar price point item. You can throw, a, uh, you can get a whole container of these relatively easily. But let's hit Jungle Scout and just see like what's going on here uh, with this um, item as far as sales. So this thing's selling seventy five a month. So you're selling, let's say, two and a half per day. Now that might not sound like a lot, but I mean, this is still selling almost twenty thousand dollars a month in revenue. And I would venture to guess that you could double this relatively easily by making these improvements, right? I mean, I can tell you firsthand, this is a product that I would buy. Uh, again, we have a solar attic fan. I think that this is an important thing. And again, at a place like we are in California, we want to, we have hot summers and we want to get the hot air out of our attic. I would not buy this product though. I'm not going to buy a product for $250 that doesn't have more information. I mean, that's just not going to happen. I might buy a $5 item, like a thing, a chapstick or something or whatever, uh, without seeing a lot of pictures, but I'm sure as hell not going to buy this thing without seeing the underside of it and, and understanding more about the, the motor and, and stuff. I'm not going to take the time to read it. I want to see it in the picture. I want to see what it looks like on the side of a house. Like what's the size of it in comparison to yeah. the roof shingle, all these different types of things. I mean, easily you could double the sales volume with this, I think this is a great product to, to bring in. I can't imagine this thing costs more than $50 to make, uh, yeah. just as a, reg, a, a relative guess. Uh, it does go against some of the things that we've talked about. This does have power. You know, it has electronics. It doesn't have a plug, um, which yeah. is good, but th there is an electronic component to it. But 
if it were me and I was getting into this niche, I would forego that warning or, or cautionary thing and, and dump uh, or jump uh, two feet first into this product because I think that there's a lot of opportunities. So um, I'm not sure if there's anything else you wanted to add to this one, Dave. Yeah, and I think the only thing you need to be aware of with a product like this, this is a big product, so it's not something that you can import one or two of and then hope to make a profit. You know, it's something that's going to be kind of what I would call a shipping play. So your key here is to get to the point where you can import a container of these and ideally actually ship that container from FBA or from China directly to FBA because that's going to be your key here is you want to keep those inbound shipping costs from China into FBA as cheap as possible. And that's a way that you're going to be able to price this item competitively. So it's one thing you just need to keep in mind that, you know, it's... You need to have that end game in sight where you're importing, if not a full container, it has to be for sure sea freight. Yep, 100%. All right, so our last niche that we have here, this is one that I would say I came the closest to uh, doing in this last trip out to China. Uh, I have happen to have a, a Chinese wife, a Chinese mother-in-law, obviously, uh, that are really into this stuff, uh, the, the, these Eastern medicine and herbs and my, my mother-in-law more than my, my wife, because my mother-in-law is actually from China. My wife spent, grew up here. But my, my mother-in-law has a cure for everything. It's like uh, Windex and my big frat Greek wedding or whatever the, the joke was there. But uh, I just, like, I just came back from this hike, and she had some medicine. She threw in some, like, hot water for me to put my feet in, as a for instance. There's just, there's medicine for everything. This is not stuff that's, for the most part, regulated by the FDA, because you if you're careful enough not to make any medical claims, then you don't have to have it regulated. Um, but we'll kind of get into some of these pros and cons. But I can tell you that the margin on this stuff is incredibly high. You know, I was looking at buying random herbs for like 50 cents or a dollar. The package costs more than the freaking product. Uh, and you can sell it for, for quite, a, quite a bit of money. Um, you know, I'll take the second one here. Just There's a ton of content. That was probably my favorite part of this particular yeah. play. I mean, you can anybody that's searching for this stuff would. Be, you can write good content and, and probably pretty quickly rank number one, or at least on the first page within Google on this topic. And if you have a particular product you're recommending, that could be your product that is on Amazon, uh, and help with sales. So, uh, Dave, uh, other pros. Yep, and the other pros is you have the passionate group of you know Chinese expats living in North America, uh, who are just passionate about all these Eastern medicines. But at the same time, you could also target the more casual, non-person of uh, Chinese descent and, you know, kind of make it understandable and accessible for them. So you can target both of those audiences, the Chinese hardcore group that kind of understands this and just make it more easy to understand for non-Chinese people. And then at the same time, it's also a consumable product. Uh, so, you know, Mike's going on many hikes throughout the summer. And so, you know, when he takes his little magic pouch of whatever the herbs were in there and he puts and he soaks his feet in them, well, the next time he goes for a hike, he needs another little magic pouch. And that cycle continues. So your lifetime value of a customer is going to be a lot higher than selling somebody an item that's not consumable. Yeah. So on the con side, I mean, it is something that you eat and ingest. This was not the thing that stopped me from, from doing this. I think, again... Uh, I've already researched this a bunch. It's something that you can get away without having to have uh, FDA uh, certifications. You do want to make sure that whoever you're working with has USDA certification so that they're regulated by the food stuff and that you're getting high quality stuff. But there is definitely a risk playing in China. They may or may not actually have the, the certifications or may or may not be abiding by them at the same level of scrutiny that you would have in the United States. So that that definitely worries me. And then Obviously, any other kind of regulations, you can get uh, either the F C F uh, FDA or SEC or someone uh, claiming that you're making a, a claim that isn't that isn't uh, you can't back up, for instance. So you got to be very careful about what's on your label, um, and it, it just can kind of be a pain in the butt, right? But again, these weren't the things that slowed me down. I actually think that these are, con are pros in some ways because it, there's less people. I, I want to be in a, a less competitive niche. So if I was going to put one more pro, I would say that it's not as competitive. And uh, as far as potential products, Dave, you want to kind of go down some of these? Yeah, and uh, you might have to help me through some of these because <laughs> I think you <laughs> you did this one up and you're a little bit more familiar with these medicines than I am. Um, plum flour and dried mushrooms. Dried mushrooms I'm very familiar with. Um, Chinese people have a lot of mushrooms aside from our typical shiitake and white mushrooms. They have a mushroom for everything. And <laughs> some of these are just for taste and for, uh, and 
to put on your typical food, and some of these are actually for medicinal qualities. Yep. I can't pronounce this next one. I just call it Estoraca Laca Laca Root. <laughs> That's about the best I could do, uh, but I know that this one does sell quite well. And the, the next one here is just, I, I put it because it's so funny. It actually is the best selling Eastern herb, uh, horny goat weed. We, we had a lot of fun with this one. And uh, even though we're adults, but we're immature in some ways, I guess. <laughs> but uh, we had a lot of fun with this over in, in Asia. And it, it does incredibly well, along with uh, licorice root. This is not Twizzlers. This is uh, medicinal quanti- quality uh, licorice root. There's all kinds of things that licorice can do to help improve uh, blood circulation, other things like that. So looking at one particular item in the plum flower niche. Again, a lot of the same things that you're going to see here. Not great photos. I think that this packaging is, is pretty bad. I think that you could definitely do a much higher quality label. Uh, the, the supplement facts, I would just make that something that was the whole screen because this is mm-hmm. what people really care about. Uh, okay, yeah, they show a lifestyle photo here of the size of this, which is good, but there's still more photos you could add, and definitely you can do a lot better to differentiate your plum flower extract uh, from the next guy uh, it says that there's 100 tea pills here there's nothing about how, how much it weighs or the size or uh, any of those types of things again there's no good description there is no good um there's there's no enhanced brand content and here's something that's a top 11,000 product let's just look at this on jungle scout um real quick here so i mean this is something that's selling 470 a month i mean $15,000 a month in revenue off of one product that is just ripe for the picking to improve upon. Uh, I can promise you that this is a high margin product. I, I've already priced this out myself because uh, I said, like, I mean, this is a niche that we may or may not get into in the future just because I do think it's great, but right now we're not. So we chose to put this in here. But here's something that's selling 470 units a month that you can just absolutely just steamroll them if you did all the things we just talked about, right? So, I mean, it just, there are plenty of niches to, to get into and things to do. Uh, those are the five that we picked. Uh, I hope that uh, over everything else, what we kind of illustrated here is that it's not as hard as you think. You know, it, it, all these niches apply all the rules that we just spent a long time talking to you guys about. Uh, and all you got to do is just kind of get started, walk up and down the Home Depot aisle, walk up and down a pole supply store aisle, walk up and down a, a Michael's craft store, st- just start doing internet searches. You'll think of ideas of, of niches. Use Dave's spreadsheet that uh, he showed the, the five, the fifth level niche. I forgot what you called that, Dave. Sorry. I always fifth level categories. Fifth level category. That, that's a great way. Uh, that's actually something I've done without knowing about Dave's spreadsheet at the time. You just start clicking on top level categories with an Amazon and you'll find stuff. I mean, there is plenty of broad niches out there wide open, there's still trillions of dollars of, of opportunity within Amazon. So it's not like you're looking for a needle in a haystack. Uh, any final parting words uh, before we hit the end button on this particular video, Dave? No, I think you covered most of it. And I think this lesson was a really good, just concrete example of, you know, once you pick the niche, finding the products, I mean, it's so easy to find products once you have that niche. You do it the other way around, you start with products and you're going to make a world of hurt for yourself. So. Try to follow our advice here. Uh, pick a niche first and then pick your products. Yep. All right, guys. Well, we're going to hit the end button on this video. I hope you guys have found this interesting. It's actually been fun to talk about. I love this stuff, as does Dave. Uh, and hopefully this gives you some ideas. And we will talk to you in the next video. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot us an email. We're happy to help you at any time. And we'll talk to you soon.